pulled back on the drone attacks when in fact in the last five years he's done eight times more than George Bush. As a matter of fact, this speech made little Georgie Bush look good from his terrible- I was about to say, I, I've never seen such a solid wall of lies. Uh, it, it's actually hard to tell lies uh, at that uh, level and to be that pure of a liar with even double entendres. He could tell multiple lies at once and expanding on that, there, uh, that's like a Rosetta Stone of the whole fraud was that poor guy who meant well with his ah. arm blown off, clapping on his chest next to that monster that obviously hates him in the military, Michelle. But the abomination, through that man, you can see all the fraud. Ten years when they knew in World War II don't serve more than two tours, Vietnam don't serve more than two tours, one is, is, is enough. I mean, they, I mean, that is like literally literally putting troops in front of a firing squad, 10 tours, and even the strongest person oh. psychologically can't handle that. And it just shows how they're just spending everything and, and how it's totally dishonorable. I mean, I don't mean to start ranting. It's just, and then to use him for more warmongering and reflected glory like Obama's a hero when he says, I'm really good at killing people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a suit. What did he say? I didn't know that suit would fit me so well. He should be in a white jacket. That's the suit he should be in. And again, you looked at all these, these, these little trained seals, these political seals, jumping down and applauding this. You know, this war brought nothing but more hatred around the world. And remember the big lie that, we, they, that George Bush launched it on. We're going to get Osama bin Laden because the Taliban won't give him to us. That was the reason for attacking Afghanistan. And now we've been there, as you mentioned, the longest war in American history. And they played that card. But I want to go back to gun control and drones. Okay, let's have gun control. Let's start with you, Junior. Stop sending your drones. That's killing people. Oh, it's a different gun. That's all it is. Oh, you want to talk about gun control? Let's start with the military. Let's start with them and start controlling that. You're building too many weapons, man, and you're using them to kill too many people. You want to talk gun control? Hey, how about the militarization of the police in America. You want to talk about gun control? Let's start with that. Oh, did you see that congressman from Staten Island that's making the news, Representative Michael Grimm? Perfect name for the cat. How he threatened that little reporter from New York One to throw him over the balcony and cut him in half. You know who Michael Grimm is? It's perfect. A former FBI agent. Go to Wikipedia, look it up. This guy, New Yorker, New Yorker magazine, did a story on him about how he went into a nightclub and threatened this, this, this uh, guy and said that they'll never find him again. A words to that effect. And then came back twice and one time pulled a gun and played the on the FBI. Another guy, another guy, these tough guys, you know, that threaten little boys. And by the way, if you or I were to send a letter to Grimm or Pelosi or Diane, not to Feinstein, and threaten to throw them off a balcony and cut them in half, those FBI guys, they'd be there, man, having us face down, beating the crap out of us. Well, that's what I was about to say is jail. Cuomo says if you don't agree with him politically, get out of the state. Uh, they're threatening to kill people. But this is a direct threat. No, this no, I agree. They're gangsters. Threat. They're gangsters. And, 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 and what's happening to him now after he did this? Nothing. He, they apologized. Then everything will be okay. Again, the word justice is J-U-S-T-U-S. -U Just us. No Wall Street heads go. Again, if you or I sent a threatening letter to a congressman, we would, they would lock us up. This is a direct threat. Well, he what hasn't he hasn't denied it, and we have the clip. It's a little bit low audio, but you can hear it. And imagine for having a reporter there, he threatens to kill him. And let's play that clip for radio uh, listeners, TV viewers can actually see him come over and do it. Here it is. And then we'll uh, get before uh, we let you go, since we have you here, we haven't had a chance to kind of talk about some I'm of the not th about anything that's off topic. This is only about the president. Well, what about? I 
All right, so Congressman Michael Grimm does not want to talk about uh, some of the, the allegations uh, concerning his campaign finances. We wanted to get him on camera on that, but he, uh, as you saw, refused to talk about that. Back to you. threatened to throw him off the balcony. Again, it doesn't go over radio too well, but you can hear it. It's up on Infowars.com if you want to actually turn it up and hear it. Over AM, people won't be able to understand it. I mean, he clearly is saying, I'll throw you off, I'll kill you, I'll cut you in half. And he looks like a total thug. And the fact is, he thinks they're above the law. And I see on these police websites, and I'm not against the general police because that feeds into the balkanization, but where they talk on their forums about killing protesters. And anybody films me, I'm going to... I'm going to kill him. Uh, and, and, you know, stuff like that. It's this military attitude, like anybody else's rights uh, are, you know, a threat to be dealt with. And I'm sorry. I mean, if some guy got in my face and said, I'm going to throw you off a balcony, I would shove him back. And then if they tried to punch me, I, mean, I, I would shove them and say, how dare you threaten me? Uh, and th then if they came at me, I'd punch him in the face. And then I, I would be arrested for terrorism. Gerald Salente, what would you do if he did that to you? Well, again, you know, look at this guy. You'll go to go to uh, uh, Wikipedia and you can see the story, how he pulled a gun on these guys in this nightclub. He's a thug. And again, hey, Junior, do you ever hear the word public servant? Try that one on. None of these, these, these clowns, these political clowns, every election time, I'm a public servant. Yeah, clean the toilets over here. They're royalty. You saw it last night. You, I see it in every one of these State of the Union addresses. And now the cabinet of the... Hey, what is this pop in circumstances? Cut the crap. Well, that's what right. In old all State of the all? Unions, they would heckle the president if he was lying, and they would throw stuff at each other and things. And I'm not saying that's good, but it's better than... I've never seen... It look like all these theater folks who don't really have talent but want to be in the theater and are obsessed with some narcissistic thing. I'm not attacking folks that want to be in the theater if they really like it, but you know, I'm talking about theater rats who then fawn around someone who gets more attention than them and, and worship them when they really hate them. And, and, and I've never seen such narcissistic hopping around and gleeful worship uh, as when he came in because it was about them being on TV. I mean, give me a break. They look like a bunch of mummies. Well, that's why politics is show business for ugly people. You nailed it. That's exactly all it is. And again, they are destroying our nation in front of us. What you see is what you get. Is there an Illuminati? Boy, if there is, the Illuminati are doing the dirty work for them. I mean, it's so transparent. It's such a failure. You look at these people. You look at their actions and look at their deeds. So as we go through and see what's going on, nothing about really the economy. And also, when we're looking at this and you talk about the big lies, he bragged about the jobs. Well, everybody knows the jobs that are being created stink. Oh, and go to college. That's right. Go to college, get deep in debt, and don't forget, you could take a course in stocking shelves. How about packaging and shipping 101? Because that's what you're going to do when you get out of college. So it was one lie after another, and again, totally flat. So now here we are, and as we're talking, the Federal Reserve announced, just as we had forecast, Another round of tapering. And you're seeing what's going on in all the emerging markets. Everyone should pay attention to this. It's very important. The only reason, as you well know, and everyone else does that listens to your show, the only reason we have any kind of a recovery at all is because all of these tens of trillions of dollars of central banks have been shoving into the marketplace. All this cheap money went over to these emerging markets and it was a carry trade. So what they did is they got higher interest rates, took money cheaply, put it in another country, got more money for it, and kept playing the deal. Now all this money is flowing out. So what's going on? 
You mentioned about the bank runs, the HSBC. Then we heard the one about that you reported on, one of the first ones to do it, with J.P. Morgan Chase putting limits on how much you could withdraw. And then you're seeing what's going on in Russia, as is on your website. Now what's happening, check it out, India, Turkey, uh, uh, one country after another, they're all raising interest rates. They're doing this because the money is flowing out and their currencies are being deflated. Oh, South Africa, another one. So now, as I've mentioned, the only, the only thing that kept this going, as everyone knows, is the cheap money flow. Now they're tightening it up. The currencies are crashing. Great. China is announcing, as we're seeing from the data coming out, that their economy is actually going down from the data, not that they're announcing it from reading the, reading the information. So the economies are going down, and now you're raising interest rates. Brilliant. Turkey's just raised their interest rates, you know, it's over 12%, about 12%. Their economy is crashing. They're in a crisis. India raised their interest rate. South, uh, South Africa, they're all raising their interest rates to protect their currencies. You don't raise interest rates as you're going into a recession unless you want to create a depression, but they have no choice. So you can see where the future is heading, and it's an ugly one. That's right, and either course causes major economic problems. I have your Trends Journal from the winter of 2010, the Trend Post. And I mentioned this to you. Do you have that in front of you, uh, what you wrote back at that time? Uh, Said, yeah, should the bottom fall out of the economy, be it from a terror strike, financial crisis, war, environmental, health-related, talk about this quote. Catastrophe or other wild-caught events, draconian measures will be taken by governments to forestall panic, prevent runs on banks, and keep equity markets from crashing. In such a scenario, bank holidays, cash restrictions, and stock market closings should be expected. And now they're making the first major moves after Cyprus to do that and are in financial publications, CNBC, Financial Times, New York Times, Wall Street Journal. I covered it yesterday. Going, maybe you'll have to pay to have money in the bank now. Maybe we're not going to let you get cash out. Maybe we're, you know, maybe we're going to take some money out of your account like John Corzine did. And if you don't like it, Homeland Security will come by. And, and we got to give the illegal immigrants free health care. But if an old lady can't pay her property taxes, we're going to take it. I mean, it's so predatory. And then if we try to go out on the street and protest, the cops come and beat our heads in when their own future is being destroyed. I mean, we are in a disaster situation because they ran this scam to take over. They knew what was going to happen, and they're going to use the next crisis as another power grab, another bailout. Gerald Salente, where are we going? You really said it. Do You really put it together. And when you listen to Obama's empty speech yesterday, there's nothing there. They're going to use it to control us when this thing comes down. They're not worried in, in D.C. They know what the, what the deal is. They're aware of what's going on. So what we're seeing is they're preparing for the worst. Again, the HSBC as is making, again, this isn't coming from, you know, the progressive. It's BBC reporting on it about how they they're, have cash restrictions. Again, what you've been reporting on. And by the way, I did a story earlier than this about how I couldn't get my money out of KeyBank. In the 2010, it happened in 2009, and it happened to me again with HSBC two years later. They wouldn't give me my money, and they started putting me through all these 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 hoops to run through, and I caused a scene over there. So what I'm saying is the system is collapsing in front of us. Again, this guy is grim. He's he's he is he's in mirror image of what the police have become today to keep us down and to protect 
How come they'll protect John the Slime Corzine? They'll protect Jamie Legs Dying. While they arrest members of the media like Dinesh D'Souza and governors for crooked toenails because they might run against Hillary. Yeah, it's pure political persecution. I want to ask Gerald where he sees this going and how we stop it. Stay with us. We're on the march.